Hello fellow kaiju fans and kaiju collectors, I'm back for my next uh, Ultraman figure review and today what we're going to be taking a look at is yet another of the Ultra 500 series. Um, I'm going to try to pick up some more of these because I'm actually running out of monsters right now, believe it or not. I only have five from the Ultra Monster 500 series. I do have one from the Ultra Monster series, which I'll probably review him once I run out of um, Ultra Monster 500 figures. Um, and I'm going to try to pick up like a variety of different Ultra Monsters, like not only just from the uh, original Ultraman, but like uh, Ultra 7, Ultraman Jack, Ultraman Ace. Well, I'm, I want to pick up Ace himself because I have Voxim, and uh, I need Voxim to go with Ace, not with the original Ultraman. But today we're going to be taking a look at is another of the original Ultraman Kaiju, um, he's actually one of my favorite monsters out of the original Ultraman, one of my favorite monsters of all time. Uh, of course, he's a fan favorite of many people, um, including myself, but he's not my absolute favorite. So, what we're going to be taking a look at today is the Ultra Monster 500 figure of Gamora. So, yeah, or Gomera, Gamora, Gomera, I don't know. It's however you, or Gomera, I, I, however you want to pronounce it is fine. I really don't know the correct pronunciation, but um, all I know is that this guy is one of the more fan favorites of the Ultra series um, because of, well, he's he's one of the more infamous monsters because he's one of the few that almost beats Ultraman. Uh, not as much as some people, like, he, he comes close to beating Ultraman. Um, dangerously close, actually. Uh, in fact, the fight has to, like, the episode ends with Ultraman where he barely escapes from the fight. So, yeah, but um, we'll go on to that once I go on to his history. Now, um, in terms of detailing, this guy on camera, he may look like a darker brown. He's actually not. He's a much lighter brown. Uh, the lighting that I have is rather dull, so he comes off as being, like, this very dark, almost chocolatey brown on camera with the red being very vibrant and everything else. He's not. He's more of a light brown. Um, even though I'm pretty sure in the show he was a dark, like, almost like, um, hardwood kind of brown. It wasn't this tannish dirt color that he had, but that's the design that they went for with the figure. Um, but nicely enough, they did just keep with the original sculpt of the figure. Um, let me focus this in. Um, his teeth are painted, unlike some of the other Ultra Monster 500 figures, um, but he does have the paint on the horns, um, which I'm really glad they went with the original sculpt for this, because I think that this very uh, this fits Gamora very well. Extremely well, actually. Um, he's got the five fingers. Um, that That's the neat thing, though. You can um, actually bend his arms out a little bit, so he can have like a very menacing sort of like arms out kind of pose or you can have them very close together depending on how well you can position them um, but of course they will go back um, but that would be good for stop motion like let's say you wanted to um, do that and you wanted to catch like or you wanted to do like some sort of shooting of like Gamora his arms going out or his arms going in in some way you could probably do that just slow, uh, either speed it up or slow it down um, but we do get some nice detailing on his chest Thing. I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it is very nicely detailed. He does have the uh, streak going down his back. I don't know what that, what the point of that is. Um, and then we have the tail, which is a nice long tail, and it's actually curved too, which I really like. Um, and then you have the feet. Um, unfortunately, the legs are not positionable. Um, but um, and then this claw on the back, which is on both feet, um, is not painted. So, yeah. Um, but we do get the nice, almost like half-asleep expression on Gamora, which is rather accurate to the show. I think that his horn probably should have been a little bit more curved, though. Like, it should have gone out and down a little bit. Um, because as far as I remember in the show, or no, this is accurate to the show. Because it was in, Al in, I believe it was in Ultraman Max or Ultraman Gal or Ultra Galaxy that it started... Um, getting that curve to it, but yeah. Um, so as far as history goes, I'm only going to focus on his 
Ultraman history from the first series because I'm not 100% sure of his other history. I know he's been in a whole bunch of different TV, uh, Ultraman TV shows, but I just can't name them all. So, um, essentially what happens is, uh, Gamora is this, I think in the Japanese version they say he was like this million-year-old dinosaur, well, he was a multi-million-year-old dinosaur um, who is essentially trapped on this island, and they hope to excavate it and take it back to Japan for study. Well, they managed to, but en route he starts going berserk after this uh, drug wears off, and he is forced to be dropped on the outskirts of Japan, which he then makes his way into Japan, into the heart of Tokyo, and begins attacking from underground. Um, which then prompts Hayata to become Ultraman and fight Gamora in what was a very hair-raising battle, probably when people first saw this, because you didn't know whether or not Ultraman was going to make it or not. Because um, Gamora was a very worthy foe, especially with his tail. His tail was the main weapon that he used, because he could just keep hitting Ultraman and keep hitting him and keep hitting him until Ultraman would have eventually died. Um, which he, uh, he does come dangerously close to losing all of his energy and just dying, essentially. Um, but they do decide to let him live another day, uh, which Gamora just burrows into the uh, ground, and Ultraman flies off back to M78. But in the course of it, he also loses his beta capsule, which is found by a little boy, and he ends up... Um, Hayata can't transform until the end of the second part of the episode, which was, I believe, the only two-parter episode on this entire series. Um... Because we were then given the, uh, every other episode was ended within the 25 minutes. But this one lasted through two, um, two parts. So, yeah. Um, but it is a, this is a very nice representation of Gamora. Very accurate to the show. Um, but to continue his history and conclude it, um, in the second part, of course, he finds his way to some sort of ancient Japanese castle, which he attempts to destroy. I believe he does partially destroy it. And which then Ultraman shows up and pretty much kills Gamora after the Science Patrol has blown off his tail. It's, like, severed right here because they realize that his tail is his greatest weapon. Um, but then Ultraman rips off this horn, this horn, and I believe he also smashes off the other horn as well. And then Gamora just... He just dies. Just out of nowhere, just dies. Well, yeah, because Ultraman never blasts him with his Specium Ray. Um... But, articulation. This guy has more than your average um, Ultra Monster, or Ultra Monster 500 Monster. His head does rotate 360, even though mine has a very odd joint. Um, his arms do rotate 360. You do not have to pull them out from the, uh, from the, uh, whatchamacallit, the hips. You can just rotate them like this, and they will bend very easily. And then the tail. The tail does rotate 360. Um, now, of course, you probably could, like, just pop this tail out if you wanted to and put, like, a little fake piece in and make it look like the original way that his tail was after it got blown off, but, yeah. So, sizing. This guy does size up, to a certain extent, fairly well with Ultraman, even though it's not the greatest, so... Here's Ultraman, if he'll stand. Please stand. God damn it, just stand, would you? Alright, so this is the sizing. It's not the greatest either way. Um, Gamora should be, like, way more like this. So that he can just... Like, he pretty much clobbered Ultraman. In, oh, well, he just clobbered him now. Yeah, but, um... He... Like, his tail probably should have been a lot longer in the figure. Um... So that you could really accurately get the uh, like, if you want to do a stop motion battle, you could really beat the shit out of Ultraman with it. Um, but the sizing is not the greatest. I would probably recommend trying to track down the uh, Ultra Monster series Gamora and putting him with the Ultra Monster, uh, the Ultra Hero 500 Ultraman, because I believe that the figures are actually from the Ultra Monster series are actually closer to this size. So, you do get a bigger representation of Gamora, and a more accurate one in terms of sizing. Um, but this is one of my favorite figures of the Ultra Monster 500 line. Very satisfying figure. Um, 
in terms of uh, detailing and sculpt, um, and you do get some nice articulation. I don't think, well, no, you did get art, uh, leg articulation in the previous one, but this one, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, just have him do this, which it's not going to make a difference if you have leg articulation or not. Now, if you want to go for real stop motion effects, then you could probably go for um, the Ultra... Uh, the Ultra Act uh, Gamora, which would probably be a more accurate representation as well. Um, I am considering picking up some of the Ultra Act figures for a stop motion project I'm going to work on after I've finished the Godzilla project. I'm considering doing an Ultraman movie or something along those lines. Maybe an Ultraman episode. Of course with this guy, because he is my favorite Ultraman. Um, probably not with any of the original Ultraman Kaiju. If I do use one, it's going to be one that they have in the, uh, Ultra Act line. And from what I've seen, the Ultra Act figures, like the Redux of this guy, is very cheap. So that's good. So, enough off-topic, uh, statements. I'm going to give Gamora, I'm going to give him a 4.2 out of 5. Not quite a, nah, you know what, I'll give him a 3.8. He's close to a 4. He could be better in terms of sizing and everything and the detailing. I prefer the darker brown uh, paint on him as opposed to this very light brown. It just doesn't seem... It seems more like this was scene specific in terms of that he was supposed to be more towards the... Um, uh, like some of the scenes where he was popping up out of the ground, not exactly where he was fighting Ultraman, so yeah. So I'm going to give him a 3.8 out of 5. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I highly recommend him as a figure, though. He's one of the better uh, Ultra 500 sculpts. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I guess I will see you guys for the next review. So...